بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين I start with the name of Allah سبحانه وتعالى the unconditionally loving the unconditionally compassionate and may the best of peace and blessings be upon the final prophet Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم who was sent as a mercy to the whole world, to all humanity. And may the best of peace and blessings be upon all prophets as well. Dear beloved brothers and sisters, I greet you with the greetings of Islam, the greetings of peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace of Allah be upon you all. This is the fifth episode of the series of companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Today we are going to be speaking about a Sahabi, a man who lived with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anh. Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anh was described as a thin, short man. And it is said that if someone is sitting and he is standing next to him, so they both of them will be the same length. Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud, originally he is not from Mecca. He is from the tribe of Hudayl. His father passed away and he moved with his mother to Mecca searching for a job. Mecca was the center of Arabia. It was not the capital, there was no government there. But you know, because of the Kaaba, it was a religious center, economic center, so people sometimes used to go there to search for a job. Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud with his mother, they went there searching for a job. Abdullah at that time did not reach the age of puberty. He was almost 10 to 11 years old. Being young, Abdullah bin Mas'ud, who did not reach the age of puberty yet, he could not find a, a great job. He, he found only uh, some sheep to graze. He became a shepherd. His job was to take the sheep early morning and go outside to the valleys of Mecca, be with them until sunset and he comes back. This was his job every day. Early morning he leaves Mecca outside and he comes back at sunset. That's why he was unaware of things that were happening at early stage of da'wah between Rasulullah and Meccans. He just hears some words, some news that a man claimed to be a prophet, uh, calling others, that's it, this is all he knew. One day he was outside in the valleys of Mecca and two men approaches him. They came to him, uh, they looked from their faces that they are hungry, they are thirsty, they are tired. So they asked him, milk a sheep for us to drink. And he said, I cannot. These sheep are not mine. I'm entrusted. Uh, but you know, to his surprise, they were happy with his answer. Though they were hungry in need of drink, but they were happy because of the amana, the trustworthiness that he got, though he was a boy. And one of these two men asked him, do you have a virgin sheep that never mated with a male? Then he pointed to one. You know, for a sheep to produce milk, it should mate with male, with a male sheep. But this man asked for a sheep that never mated with a male. So he pointed, Abdullah pointed to one of the sheep and this man got it. And he rubbed gently its other, and he mentioned the name of Allah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And Abdullah was observing all that. The other was inflated. Abdullah was amazed by that. And not only that, this man milked the sheep, and he drinks with his friend, and they even gave Abdullah to drink. So Abdullah was totally uh, in amazement. That's why he came to this blessed man. 
I said to him, teach me with, with these words that you have just said. And this man said to him, you are a taught boy. These two men were none other than Rasulullah sallallahu he himself who milked the sheep, and his friend was Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud saw all that by his eyes, and then he wanted to do something. His fitra, his primordial nature, the fitra that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created every human being with, was still pure at that time because he is a boy. He goes to the desert early morning, come back sunset. His purity, the purity of his heart was not stained with the love of dunya, with the love of money, with the love of fame, with the love of name, with the love of titles. He, he is still pure. That's why he felt, you know, this is, uh, this is a miracle. This is a blessed man. I have to learn from him. Uh, he realized that this is the Prophet ﷺ. Abdullah bin Mas'ud went back to, to Mecca and gave the sheep to the owner, Uqbah bin Abi Mu'ayt. He gave him his sheep and he said, I quit, I don't want to work anymore. And he went to Rasulullah and he accepted Islam. He became the sixth Muslim, you know, among the early Muslims. He was a boy, young boy, but he was among the early Muslims. And he asked Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, I want to be your servant. I want to serve you. I want to be with you all the time. He uplifted, he upgraded himself. He honored himself from serving sheep to serving the best of creation, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. At the end, we will see the result. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam accepted him. He joined him. He was all the time with him. So some of the companions who came from uh, outside Mecca or after migration, they, th they said, we thought that Abdullah bin Mas'ud is one of the family members of Rasulullah Sallallahu because he was there all the time. If Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi wants to go inside his room, he go before him, he ties the room, he prepare everything for him. If Rasulullah sleeps, he waits until the time to, for Rasulullah to get up, he wakes him up. If Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi wants to go out, he prepare his shoes. Uh, he wanted to leave somewhere, he take his stuff and carry them and prepare the camel for him. He was with Rasulullah all the time. He was learning with him, you know, this servitude. It is not only service, but you are learning from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that's why some of the companions said, he is the most similar person in his guidance and in his character and in his behavior to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, because he was with him all the time. He should be like that. And that's why after the Prophet ﷺ debated this dunya, he said, if I knew anyone that I can reach and he knows more than me in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I would travel to him. He knew no one on the surface of earth who is more knowledgeable than him in the Quran. And he was not praising himself. He was not exaggerating because this, th this story approves for us this high status of him. One day at the time of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anh, his caliphate, a man came from Kufa from Iraq, came to him and said to Umar, I left behind in Kufa a man teaching the Quran by heart. Sayyidina Umar was very angry because he knew no one in the Kufa uh, that he is entitled to do that. And then he asked him, who is that? That man said, Abdullah bin Mas'ud. When Sayyidina Umar heard this, you know, his anger vanished and he said, I know no one on the surface of earth today more entitled to do that than Abdullah bin Mas'ud. Sayyidina Umar continued, he said, 
One day the Prophet ﷺ visited Abu Bakr at night and I was with him. When Rasulullah went back home, I went back with him uh, and Abu Bakr also went back with us. So if Rasulullah visited someone, they just don't say Assalamu Alaikum from their house. They go with Rasulullah to his house. When Rasulullah enters, they go back. This is the love and the respect to Rasulullah The house of Rasulullah was next to the masjid, attached to the masjid. So when Rasulullah reached his house, he looked into the masjid and he found Abdullah ibn Mas'ud standing up and praying. And he was reciting the Quran. And Rasulullah stood there and he listened to him. And Rasulullah said, من سره أن يقرأ القرآن رطبا كما أنزل فليقرأه على قراءة ابن أم عبد That means whoever is pleased to recite the Quran as fresh as it was revealed as fresh as Rasulullah received it from Jibreel عليه السلام and Jibreel received it from Allah as fresh as that so recite it the way Abdullah bin Ummi, Abdullah bin Mas'ud, he used to, to be named also Ibn Umm Abd because they call him after, they name him after his mother because his father passed away. So Ibn Umm Abd or Ibn Mas'ud, he is the same person. They name him after his, his father and after his mother. So the Prophet Sallallahu said, if you like to, to Recite the Quran as fresh as it was revealed to me to the Prophet ﷺ. Recite it the way that Abdullah bin Mas'ud does. And then Abdullah bin Mas'ud finished praying and he sat down making dua, supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Sal tu'tah, sal tu'tah. Ask and you shall be granted. Ask and you shall be granted. Sayyidina Umar said to himself, tomorrow morning, I will go and tell him this news. You know, this is great news from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And next day in the morning, he went to tell him, but he found that Abu Bakr already did. And Sayyidina Umar said, by Allah, I have never tried to do something before Abu Bakr, but he always did it before me. And one day Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud said, the Prophet Sallallahu said to me, Iqra' alayya al-Qur'an. The Prophet asked Abdullah radiallahu an to recite the Qur'an for him. So Sayyidina Abdullah, out of amazement and respect and love to the Prophet, he said, Ya Rasulullah, Iqra'u alayka wa alayka unzil. Ya Rasulullah, I recite it for you. And it was revealed to you. You are the source of the Quran for us. We learn from you. You want me to recite for you? But Rasulullah said, Inni ashtahi an asma'ahu min ghayrihi. I like to hear it from others. Then Sayyidina Abdullah said, Faqaratu an nisa. Then he started reciting Surah an nisa. Hatta iza balagtu until he reached this ayah. Fakayfa iza jitna min kulli ummatin bi shaheed. Wajitna bika ala haula ishaheeda. How it will be? How shall it be when we bring from every nation a witness and we, we bring you, meaning Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a witness against those, that meaning the disbelievers of Mecca. And he said, I raised my head or someone nudged me, touched me, and I noticed that the tears of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa were flowing. Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud reached a high level in learning from the Prophet And after the Prophet he became one of the main seven scholars of the, of the Sahaba, of the companions of the Prophet You know the Prophet passed away and he left thousands of companions. But he was one of the main seven scholars of the companions because of the servitude that he, that he offered, because he was learning every day from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He reached a very high level. One day, he was traveling, Sayyidina Abdullah Mas'ud was traveling in a caravan, 
and Sayyidina Umar bin Khattab was traveling in another. On their journey, they met each other and they sat to rest next to each other. But before they recognized each other, Sayyidina Umar asked the other caravan. So Sayyidina Umar traveling in one caravan, Abdullah bin Mas'ud traveling in another, but they don't know that Abdullah bin Mas'ud is there, or neither Abdullah knows that Sayyidina Umar is there. They don't know each other yet. So Sayyidina Umar sat down to rest. He wanted to know who is the other caravan, at least to be, to be safe. So he asked them, where are you from? Min ayn al qawm? And then the answer came, min al fajjil amiq. Al fajjil amiq means the deep distant valley. And these are words from the Quran. So he asked him, Sayyidina Umar asked them, where are you from? The answer came from the Quran. And then he asked them, ayn turidun? Where are you going? And the answer came also, Al-Bayt Al-Atiq. Al-Bayt Al-Atiq meaning the Kaaba. Also, this is from the Quran. And then Sayyidina Umar said, there should be a knowledgeable man in the Quran with them. So this, not anyone can tell. I ask, it, I ask them, where are you from? They answer me from the Quran. I ask them, where are you going? They answer me from the Quran. There should be a scholar in the Quran, a knowledgeable person in the Quran who is able to give such answers. Then Sayyidina, Abdullah, Sayyidina Umar sorry, wanted to, to test them. So he started asking them. And he said, Ayyul Qur'ani a'zam? Which of the Qur'an is the greatest? And then the answer comes, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyul qayyum. You know, Ayat al-Kursi, all of us, we know that. And then Sayyidina Umar asked again, Ayyul Qur'ani ahkam? Which of the Qur'an is the most wise, the most perfect, the most refined? This is, this is the meaning of ahkam. And the answer comes, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُ بِالْعَدْلِ وَالْإِحْسَانِ وَإِيْتَاءِ ذِي الْقُرْبَى Allah commands justice. وَالْإِحْسَانِ And kindness, not only justice, but be kind to others. وَإِيْتَاءِ ذِي الْقُرْبَى and giving the relatives. Then Sayyidina Umar asked again, Ayyul Qur'ani akhwaf? Which of the Qur'an is the most fearful? And the answer comes, Laysa bi amaniyikum wa la amaniyi ahli al-kitab. May ya'mal su'an yujza bih. It is not by, the, not by your wishful thinkings, not the wishful thinkings of the Muslims, nor the wishful thinkings of the people of the book. May ya'mal su'an yujza bihi. The issue is amal, the issue is deeds. May ya'mal su'an, whoever does evil will be recompensed for it. He will be punished for it. May ya'mal su'an yujza bihi. This is the most fearful ayah in the Quran. And then Sayyidina Umar asked them, Ayyul Qur'ani arja? Which of the Qur'an is the most hopeful? Which is the ayah that give the most hope in the Qur'an? And then the answer comes, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Say, O oh my Servants, my slaves, Ya ibadiya alladhina asrafu ala anfusihim, who transgressed against themselves, who wronged themselves, who exceeded the limits. La taqnatu min rahmatillah. Do not despair of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna Allah yaghfiru dhunuba jami'a. For indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive the sins all. And then Sayyidina Umar asked them, Afikum Abdullah bin Mas'ud, is Abdullah bin Mas'ud among you? Then they said, yes. So Sayyidina Umar figured it. Abdullah bin Mas'ud is the one who can answer all this from the Quran. This is the level that he, that he reached because of learning from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet ﷺ is not 
not with us now, but his sunnah, his life, is still among us. His teachings among us. And the Prophet ﷺ also said, Al-ulama'u warathatul anbiya. The ulama, the true scholars, are the heirs of the Prophet. You go and learn from them. Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud spent all his life with them. How long are you spending? What are you doing? He served Rasulullah all his life. He quit his job and he came to serve Rasulullah to learn from him. What are you doing to learn from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? As I said, Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud was thin. So one day he climbed a tree to get an arak stick. Arak stick is a stick that they used to, to brush their teeth by. And that wind blew. So the companions with the Prophet ﷺ, they were sitting there, they laughed. And the Prophet ﷺ asked them, why are you laughing? Then they said, Ya Rasulullah, his, his leg is, is very thin. The Prophet ﷺ said, Lahuma, his two legs, fil mizani athqalu min uhud. In the scale of Allah, they are heavier than the mountain of Uhud. It doesn't matter whether you are, I mean, your body is big or small. What matters is your Iman and your actions. So he was thin, he was short, but the Prophet ﷺ said his legs are heavier in the scale of Allah than the mountain of Uhud. You know how, how heavy the mountain is. It is, it is not your body, it is your Iman, it is your heart where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at. Are you taking of your heart the same way you are taking care of your body? Are you taking care of your heart, purifying it, illuminating it, cleaning it, making it pure? Because this is the place where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't look at our shapes, our outer looking, but He looks at our hearts, how pure it is. Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud was not only a knowledgeable person, and he gets knowledge for himself. He understood from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that when, once you get the knowledge, that the knowledge of truth, once you get the, the illumination from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have to share it with others. It is not a choice. That's why one day he was in Mecca, radiallahu anh, before migration to Medina, and it was very risky to, to announce that you are a Muslim. Muslims were killed because they just believed la ilaha illallah. One of them is Yasir, the father of Ammar bin Yasir, Sumayya, the mother of Ammar also, and many others were killed just because they accepted La ilaha illallah. So if you want to go and invite people, in, especially at that time in Mecca, to the message of Allah, to the message of happiness, the message that will save them in this dunya and in the coming life, the message that will guide you to Allah, the message that will illuminate your heart, the message that will guide you to Jannah, they will kill you. But you know, because when the teachings of Allah is settled in the heart, we realize that we have to do that. So one day the companions of Rasulullah sitting together and they said to each other, Many people of Mecca are resisting the message of the Prophet, though they don't know it. Their leaders, they said, we don't want this message, so they just follow their leaders. They don't really realize the reality of this message. They, so they said, why not we make them hear it? But you know, it was very risky. The one who will do that, uh, there is a big chance that he will be killed. So the Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet sitting together and they said, why not we tell them the message of Allah? Maybe when they hear it, they will accept. They are resisting it without hearing it. So Sayyidina Abdullah Masoud said, I will do it. 
They said to him, no, you should not do that. You have no tribe to protect you. You know, Mecca is a tribal society. There is no government there, no police. So how they protect each other? Every tribe protect its, mem its members. So Abdullah bin Mas'ud, he is not from any tribe of Mecca. He is from outside. He migrated to Mecca. Though he was Halif Bani Zuhra, he allied Bani Zuhra. This is how, how people, when they come out from outside, they ally a, a sub-tribe of, of uh, the people there in Mecca. So they will be a kind of mutual bond to make a, a mutual protection. But he is not originally a member of that tribe. So they said to him, uh, you know, you don't have a tribe to protect you. And he said, never mind. I'm doing that for Allah. And Allah will protect me. He risked his life, you know, for the sake of people who killed some of them. There will be a big chance that he might be killed. But though he realized that, he went to the Kaaba. And all Meccans there, and he started reciting Surah Ar-Rahman. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ar-Rahman, allama al-Qur'an. Khalaq al-Insan, allamahu al-Bayan. And he continued. People in Mecca said, what happened to him? So one of them said, he is reciting that which Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they don't believe Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he brought. So when he, they heard that, they came to him. Some stabbed him on the face. Others, they got a bone and they throw him with bone. Others, they find a piece of wood, they throw him with a piece of wood. Others, they, throw, they, they hit him with their shoes. I mean, until he, con and he continued reciting, maybe one of them hears the beauty of this Quran. And they are hitting him and he's reciting, hitting him and he's reciting until he recited what Allah willed for him to recite from the Surah Ar-Rahman. And he came back and his face was full of blood. The companions told him, this is what we feared for you. And he said, by Allah, Allah removed my fear from the heart, from my heart. I used to fear them before this moment, but now I don't fear them anymore. You know, he did that for Allah. Allah removed that fear from his heart. He risked all his life, you know, for those people who did this to him uh, to convey the message of Allah to them. Now, what are you doing to convey the message of Allah? They knew that this is compulsory to, to teach and convey the message of Allah. Though you are going to risk your life. Now, uh, many of us, we don't bother learning the message of Allah. If we learn, you know, most of us, we are not willing to share and convey the message. And those among us, many of us who share the message of Allah, if there is no personal gain, I don't get paid for it, I will not make it. If I don't have money for that, I will not make it. Uh, am I making it for Allah? Or I'm making it for money. Am I sharing the message of Allah to get personal gain? Or I'm sharing it for the sake of Allah. So the companions, they realize that I need to do that. I have no choice. I need to, to bring people from darknesses into the illumination, the light of the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Though I risk myself. I spend from my money, I spend my time, I spend my effort, I spend my reputation. Many people will speak ill of me. I don't need anything. I need Allah. This is what the companions of the Prophet realized. This is one of the major difference between them and us nowadays. They used to spend everything they had to risk their life. Many of them died for Allah. But now, uh, unfortunately, many of us are not willing to do anything for Allah. I'm not going to do anything good if I don't get things in return. Uh, this is one of the major 
differences. Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud realized that in the early stage, still in Mecca, and he risked his life for the sake of it. Towards the end of his life, Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud was sick, and Sayyidina Uthman came to visit him, and he, he asked him, Ma tashtaki? And what, what are you complaining about? And he said, I'm complaining about my sins. He did not say, I'm complaining about my poverty, I'm complaining about my sickness. Uh, how come this happened to you by the will of Allah? How come you complain about something that Allah make it to you? How, could, how come you complain about something that Allah will to happen to you? He said, I complain about my sins, the things that I did. Then he asked him, فَمَا تَشْتَهِي What do you like? He said, I like the mercy of Allah, Rahmat Rabbi. I need, I wish to get the mercy of my Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Uthman asked him, will you accept the allowance, the salary from Bayt al-Mal, from the treasury that you refused to accept for years? He said, I don't need it. I'm not in need of money. Then Sayyidina Uthman said, it will be for your daughters after you. And Sayyidina Abdullah said, do you fear for my daughters? I don't fear for them. I taught them Surah Al-Waqi'ah. You know, you see his Iman in Allah. And he said, I heard the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying, Man qara al-waqi'ah kulla layla lam tusibhu faqatan abada. Whoever recites Surah Al-Waqi'ah, the Surah of Al-Waqi'ah, every night, he will never be poor. He will never be poor. If you fear poverty for yourself, if you fear poverty for your family, if you fear poverty for your children, teach them Surah Al-Waqi'ah. This is what Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud did. He, he taught his daughter Surah Al-Waqi'ah and he asked them, to recite it every night. This is an insurance from Rasulullah Sallallahu and the insurance from Rasulullah is an insurance from Allah. If you fear poverty, many companies may go bankrupt, but Allah never becomes, never becomes bankrupt. This is an insurance from Allah. Some companies might have misleading terms, but Allah never has misleading issues. If you fear for yourself, if you fear poverty, you want to get that for yourself, for your family, you have Surah Al-Waqi'ah, insurance from Allah. Go and recite it every night. This was Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud asked his daughters to do every night. Soon after that, Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud passed away. But you know what we learn from his story? When he first met Rasulullah Sallallahu he was grazing sheep. His life was serving animals. But he, once he saw the reality, he met with Rasulullah once. He quit his job and he immediately uplifted, started the journey of uplifting, of honoring himself, learning from Rasulullah Sallallahu until he became one of the major seven companions of the Prophet ﷺ after the Prophet ﷺ passed away. And his knowledge until now, we use it. Whenever you go to the books of Hadith, the books of Tafsir, the Quran, the recitation of the Quran, the name of Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud is always there. Until today, some, for, some 1400 years, his name is there. He was sincere, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What he did, he learned for Allah with ikhlas. He did all that for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are you doing it for Allah? Allocate at least 30 minutes, one hour, to learn from the Prophet sallallahu to learn from his life, from his seerah, from his sunnah, to learn the Quran that the Prophet sallallahu brought us. If you die and meet the Prophet sallallahu and he asks you, what do you know about me? You know, if you want to be with Rasulullah, Rasulullah is in the top, in the highest place in Jannah. If you, if you want to be with him in that, 
in that high place, uh, you know, you need to know his life. You need to follow his steps. How come you follow things that you don't know? You, you, we need to know. We need to learn. And then we need to live, to implement. And then, inshallah, we live his sunnah with ikhlas for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We try our best to follow his steps. So when we die, we will be with him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is what Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud did. And what we should learn from his story is that we need to follow his steps and do the same. With that, we come to the end of this episode. See you, inshallah, in the next episode. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من دعا إلى هدى كان له من الأجر مثل أجور من تبعه لا ينقص ذلك من أجورهم شيئا رواه مسلم Prophet Muhammad peace and blessing be upon him said anyone who calls to guidance will have a reward equal to the reward of those who adhere to it without their reward being diminished in any respect narrated by Muslim If you think there is guidance in this video share it and call others to it